in 1, write 0 0.37 as a fraction. Well, the answer is 37 over 100. And that's our final answer. Question 2. Write 29,381 correct to the nearest 1,000. So 9 is in the thousands column. So we need to decide whether this 9 is going to go up or down. It all depends on the number next to it. So the number next to it is 3. So 3 is less than 5. So we're going to round down. So the answer is 29,000. Question 3. Simplify 3e minus e plus 4e. So I'm going to start off with the first two terms in this expression. We have 3e minus 1e, which equals to 2e. Then 2e plus 4e gives us 6e. So our final answer is 6e. Question 4. Write one quarter as a percentage. Well, the answer is 25%. Question 5. Here is a list of numbers. 3, 4, 9, 18, 27, 30, 36. From the numbers in the list, write down a cube number. Well, from the list is 27 because 3 times 3 times 3 is equal to 27. So the answer is 27. Question 6. Liz is watching a film at the cinema. The film starts at 14.30 hours. The film is 105 minutes long. When the film ends, Liz takes 20 minutes to get to the bus stop. A bus leaves the bus stop at 16.45 hours. Does Liz get to the bus stop in time to get to the bus? You must show all your working. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert 105 minutes into hours. So 105 minutes. is equal to 1 hour and 45 minutes. I'm then going to add 1 hour and 45 minutes to the time the film starts at 14.30 hours to see when it ends. So 14.30 hours plus 1 hour and 45 minutes equals to 16, 15 hours. So the film ends at 16, 15 hours. Now it says when the film ends, Liz takes 20 minutes to get to the bus stop. So again, I'm gonna add 20 minutes to 16, 15 hours. So 16, 15 plus 20 minutes equals 16, 35 hours. So Liz has 10 minutes to spare considering that the bus leaves at 16.45 hours and she will get to the bus stop at 16.35 hours. So she has 10 minutes to spare and she does get on time. That's your final answer. Question seven. Fahad, George and Tom each did a test. Here are the marks for the test. Fahad, 74. George, 77. Tom, 72. George drew this bar chart to show the marks they got. The bar chart is not fully correct. Write down two things that are wrong with George's bar chart. The first mistake you should notice about this bar chart is that the width of the bars are completely different. The width of Tom's bar is different from George and Fahad when it should be the same. So, width of bar is different. The second mistake is that the y-axis should be labelled as frequency or test score. So let me write that down. Frequency or test score. Question 8. A, B, C is a straight line. A, I. Work out the size of the angle marked X. I, I. 
give a reason for your answer. Well, as you should know, angles in a straight line add up to 180. Now to work out the value of x, we need to do 180 degrees minus 150 degrees, which equals 30 degrees. So the value of x is equal to 30 degrees. I, I give a reason for your answer. Angles in a straight line add up to 180. So let me just write that down. Eight B, the diagram below is wrong. Explain why. Well, angles around a point should add up to 360. We have a 90 degrees over here and 280 degrees. So if I add them together, it equals to 370 degrees, which is wrong. So angles around a point should add up to 360. Angles around a point should add up to 360 degrees, not 370 degrees. Question nine. This scale can be used to change between kilometers and miles. A, use the scale to change 40 kilometers to miles. So we need to change 40 kilometers to miles. Here is 40 kilometers on the scale. It is exactly between 20 and 30. So it's 25 miles. Here is an approximate rule to change from kilometers to miles. Divide the distance in kilometers by 10 and then multiply by six. B, use this approximate rule to change 40 kilometers to miles. So the first thing we need to do is to divide 40 kilometers by 10, as it says in the question, divide the distance in kilometers by 10. So 40 kilometers divided by 10 equals to four. We then need to multiply it by six. So four times six, equals to 24 miles. So the answer is 24 miles. Question C, compare your answer to part B with your answer to part A. Our answer to part A was 25 miles and B was 24 miles. It's very similar to each other very close to each other. Question 10a, solve 3m equals 36. Now there's two ways of answering this question. The first way is asking yourself, what do you need to multiply three to give us 36? Well, the answer is 12. The second way is using the inverse operation. Here we have three times m. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So to isolate the m, we're gonna divide both sides by three. And what we're left with is m is equal to 12. So our final answer is 12. 10b, solve. 7 minus x equals 3. Now the first thing I need to do is I need to cancel the 7. To cancel the 7, I'm going to minus 7 from both sides to balance the equation. So 7 minus 7. 7 minus 7 is 0, cancels out. Whatever you do to one side of the equation, you must do to the other side. So what we're left with is minus x equals minus 4. I'm then going to divide both sides by negative one, which will help me get a positive x. So divide negative one over here, and divide negative one over here. And what we're left with is x is equal to positive four. So our final answer is 
4. X is equal to 4. Question 11. Here is a cuboid. Work out the volume of the cuboid. To work out the volume of the cuboid, what we need to do is to multiply the height times the width times the length. So let me just write that down. Cuboid. is equal to the height times the width times the length. Now the height of this cuboid is 4 centimeters, so let me substitute that back into the equation. So 4 centimeters. The width is 10 centimeters and the length is 15 centimeters. Now when you multiply all the numbers together, we should have 600 centimeters cubed. So our final answer is 600 centimeters cubed. Question 12. Lucy uses a code to open a lock. The code is a letter followed by a two digit number. The letter is L or U. The number is a prime number between 20 and 30. Write down all the possibilities for Lucy's code. So the first thing I'm going to do is list the prime numbers between 20 and 30. There's only two prime numbers. So the first prime number between 20 and 30 is 23 and 29. So the different types of combination that Lucy can have for her code are L23, L 29 and U23 and U29. So these are all the possibilities for Lucy's code. Question 13. A machine fills bags with sweets. There are 4,275 sweets. There are 28 sweets in each full bag. The machine fills as many bags as possible. How many sweets are left? Now the first thing we need to do is to find out how many bags this machine is going to fill. To do this, I'm going to divide 4,275 by 28. So 4,275 divided by 28, which equals to 152.6785712. So we know that the machine is going to fill 152 bags. To find the remainder of the sweets, I'm going to multiply 152 by 28. So 152 times 28, which equals to 4,256 sweets. To find the remainder of sweets, I'm going to subtract 4,256 sweets from 4,275 sweets. So it's 4,275 minus 4,256, which equals to 19. So 19 sweets are left. And that's our final answer. Question 14. The table gives information about the number of goals scored by each of the three teams. City, 50 goals. Rovers, 45 goals. United, 25 goals. Draw an accurate pie chart for this information. So the first thing we need to do is to add up the number of goals scored by each team. So 50 plus 45 plus 25 equals to 120 goals. The angle in a full circle is equal to 360 degrees. So we need to ask ourselves, what do I need to multiply 120 to equal to 360 degrees? The answer is 3. So if I multiply 120 by 3 equals 360. Therefore, I'm going to multiply each team's goals by 3. So 50 times it by 3 is equal to 150 degrees. 45 times 3 
is equal to 135 degrees. 25 times 3 is equal to 75 degrees. Now I'm going to use my protractor to construct my pie chart. So the first team is city, so I need to draw 150 degrees. So I'm going to line up my protractor in the middle. So it should be zero, zero. Yep. Now, 150 is over here. So I'm going to move my protractor out the way and draw a straight line from the center of the circle. Good. Uh, so I'm going to write city. Next, I'm going to draw the angle of 135 degrees with rovers. So I'm going to grab my protractor again. See if I can rotate it. Yep. Make sure it's straight and lined together. That's good enough. Now we are looking for 135, 135 is over here. Yep, gonna move my protractor out of the way, draw a line. So we have Rovers is over here. And United is over here. Question 15. T equals 3x plus 4y. A. Work out the value of T when x equals 5 and y equals minus 7. So this question involves substitution. So all I'm going to do is substitute the values given to us in this question into this equation. So we have T is equal to 3x plus 4y. Now when x is equal to 5, I'm going to plug it back into this equation. And when y equals to minus 7, plug it back into the equation. So we should have t is equal to 3, open brackets, 5, close brackets, plus 4, open brackets, minus 7, close brackets. I'm going to expand the bracket. So t is equal to 3 times 5, which is 15, times 4, by minus 7, which is minus 28. 15 minus 28 gives us to negative 13. So our final answer is minus 13. B, work out the value of y when t equals 38 and x equals 6. So to work out this question, what you need to do is substitute the values given to us in this question into the equation. So the equation given to us is t equals 3x plus 4y. Now, t equals 38. I'm going to substitute back into this equation. So 38, open brackets, 3 times x, which is 6. I'm going to open my brackets, plus 4y. 3 times 6 is 18. So 38 equals 18 plus 4 y, I'm going to subtract 18 from both sides, cancels out, whatever you do to one side of the equation you must do to the other side, so we have 20 equals 4y, now let me expand this bit, what do you need to multiply 4 to, uh, to give us 20? 5, so oh, another way of doing it, I'm going to divide both sides by 4, 20 divided by 4 is 5, so 5 equals y, y equals 5. So our final answer is 5. Question 16. An exam has two papers, paper 1 and paper 2. Paper 1 has 16 marks, 
Paper 2 has 90 marks. The pass mark is two thirds of the total number of marks. Daniela gets 70% of the marks for Paper 1. How many of the marks for Paper 2 must Daniela get in order to get the pass mark? So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add the total marks from Paper 1 and Paper 2. So Paper 1. has a total of 60 marks over here. Plus paper two, which is 90 marks. So the total is 150 marks. Now the next step is to find the pass mark. To find the pass mark, we need to find what two thirds of 150 marks is. So two thirds of 150 marks is equal to 100 marks. So the pass mark is 100 marks. Now it says in the question, Daniela gets 70% of the marks for paper one. So we need to find what 70% of paper one is. So 70% of paper one, which was 60 marks. So Daniela scored 42 marks in paper one. Now to find how many marks Daniela needs to pass, I'm going to subtract 42 from 100. So 100 marks minus 42 marks is equal to 58 marks. So Daniela needs 58 eight marks in paper two to pass. Question 17. Scott wants to make orange juice. He is going to buy boxes of oranges. There are 24 oranges in each box of oranges. 30 oranges make 2 litres of orange juice. Scott needs to buy enough oranges to make 8 litres of orange juice. A. Work out the number of boxes of oranges that Scott needs to buy. You must show all your working. So Scott needs to make 8 litres of orange juice. He needs 30 oranges to make 2 litres of orange juice. So 30 oranges... makes two litres of orange juice. Let's write OJ. So how many oranges does he need to make eight litres of orange juice? What do you need to multiply two to give us eight? You need to multiply it by four. So I multiply this side by four. I'm also going to multiply this side by four. So the answer is 30 oranges times 4, which is equal to 120 oranges. So 120 oranges makes 8 litres of orange juice. Now it says in the question, there are 24 oranges in each box of oranges. Now to work out the number of boxes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to divide 120 oranges by 24. oranges, which will give me the number of boxes, which is five boxes. So Scott needs five boxes. Question 17b. Scott also buys 1,260 apples, 280 bananas. B. Write down the ratios of the number of apples that Scott buys to the number of bananas that he buys. 
give you a ratio in its simplest form. So we have apples to bananas, so it's 1260 to 280. I'm then going to divide both numbers by 10. So what we should have is 126 to 28, divided both numbers by 10. I'm then going to divide both numbers again by two. So we should have 63 to 14. I'm then going to divide both numbers again by seven. So we should have nine to two. And our final answer is 92. Question 18. Describe fully the single transformation that maps triangle A onto triangle B. So the first thing we need to do is to find the center of rotation. To do that, I'm gonna join the corners from triangle A to triangle B. And I'm gonna connect it, this one over here to that one over here. And this one over here to this one over here. So I know that the center of rotation is minus one zero. So I'm gonna rotate it clockwise 180 degrees. So rotate. clockwise 180 degrees from minus one, zero. And that's your answer. Question 19. Adam, Linda and Retes share an amount of money. Linda gets three times as much money as Retes gets. Linda gets half as much money as Adam gets. What fraction of the amount of money does Linda get? First thing I'm going to do, I'm going to label Adam as A, Linda as L, and Red Test as R. So Adam, A, Linda, L, Red Test, R. Now, since they're all going to share a certain amount, it's going to be, I'm going to, I'm going to write it as an equation, A plus L plus R equals X. X means the amount of money. We don't know the amount of money. Now, it says... Over here, Linda gets three times as much money as Ritesh gets. So Linda is equal to three R's. Linda gets half as much money as Adam gets. So it's Linda is equal to half of A. Now, I'm going to rearrange the equation to make R the subject. So I'm going to divide both sides by three. So what we should have is a third L is equal to R. Let me write that again over here. And on this side, I'm going to make A the subject by multiplying both sides by 2. So we have 2L is equal to A. So again, R is equal to a third L and A is equal to 2L. Now at this point I'm going to substitute the value of R and A into the equation. So A is 2L plus L plus R which is one third L equals X. I want to get rid of that fraction, one third, so I'm going to multiply both sides by three. So multiply both sides by three. And what we should have is three times two L is six L. Three times L is three L. Three times one third L is just L. And we have three X. Now I'm going to collect like for like terms. And we have six L plus three L plus L, which is 10 L equals 3x. I'm going to divide both sides by 10. So we have L is equal to 3 over 10x. So Linda's share is 3 over 10. And that's your final answer. Question 20. Pens and pencils are sold in a shop. 
12 pencils cost £1.80. The ratio of the cost of a pen to the cost of a pencil is 7 to 3. Work out the cost of 5 pens. First of all, since I know that 12 pencils cost £1.80, I want to find out what one pencil costs. So I'm going to divide both sides by 12. So 12 pencils are equal to £1.80. To find out the cost of one pencil, I'm going to divide both sides by 12. So one pencil is equal to 15p. Now if you look carefully at the question, it says the cost of one pen to the cost of one pencil is 7 to 3. So 7 to 3. I'm going to simplify the ratio by dividing both the numbers by 3 so I can find the cost of one pen. So divide this side by 3 and divide this by 3. What we have is 7 over 3 to 1. So the cost of one pencil is equal to the cost of one pen, 7 over 3. Therefore, to find the cost of one pen, I'm going to multiply 7 over 3 by 15p. So 7 over 3 multiplied by 0 0.15 is equal to 0 0.35. Therefore, the cost of one pen is equal to 0 0.35. So let me write that down. Cost of one pen is 0.35. However, the question wants us to find the cost of five pens. So I'm going to multiply 0 0.35 by five. So five times 0 0.35 is equal to one pound 75 pence. So that's the cost of five pence. So five pens is equal to £1.75, and that's our final answer. Question 21a. Write 84 as a product of its prime factors. Before I do anything, I just want to define a few key words here. Product means multiply in mathematics, and prime factor is basically a number that is a prime number and also a factor. So let me just underline that here. Now to find the prime factors of 84, what we need to use is prime factor decomposition. Decomposition basically means breaking down. So 84 over here. Now two numbers that you multiply together that gives us 84. 42 and 2. 2 is a prime number, so I'm going to circle that. 42 isn't a prime number, so it can be broken down further. Again, two numbers that you multiply together that gives us 42. It's 21 and 2. 2 is a prime number. I'm going to circle that. 21 isn't a prime number, so it can be broken down further. Again, two numbers that you multiply together that gives us 21, 7 and 3. So the prime factors of 84 are, let me put it over here, 2 times 2 times 3 times 7, which can be rewritten as 2 raised to the power of 2 times it by 3 times it by 7. So I'm just going to put the final answer here. So it's 2 raised to the power of 2 times it by 3 times it by 7. B. Find the lowest common multiple LCM of 60 and 84. So the first thing we need to do is find its prime factors. To do that, 
Again, we're going to be using the process prime factor decomposition. So 60, two numbers that you multiply together, that gives us 60. So we have two, circle that because it's a prime number, and 30. 30 is in prime number, so it can be broken down further. Two, circle that, and 15. 15 can be, can be broken down further because it isn't a prime number. So two numbers multiplied together, that gives 15. We have five and three. Five is a prime number, three is a prime number. Now again, 84, we've already done 84. So let me just quickly do this. So again, two numbers multiplied together, that gives 84, 42. 42 isn't a prime number, which can be broken down further. Two is a prime number, hence the reason why I've circled it. Two numbers multiplied together, that gives 42. We've got 21 and two. Two is a prime number. 21 isn't, it can be broken down further. So we have seven and three. Seven is a prime number and three is a prime number. Now the next step is to list the product of prime factors for each of the numbers, 60 and 84. So 60 is equal to two times two times three times five, and 84 is equal to two times two times three times seven. I'm then going to construct my Venn diagram. Now, when you fill in your Venn diagram, you always start in the middle. The middle is known as the intersection. The intersection is where we have a common prime factors between the two numbers. So for example, we have a two and a two. So we're gonna put a little box around it. So one set of twos, we could put it over here. We have another set of twos, which is common between the two numbers, 60 and 84. And we have another set of threes, which goes over here. And then we have a five and a seven. To find the lowest common multiple, what we need to do is to multiply all the numbers in the Venn diagram. So lowest common multiple is equal to five times two times another two times three, times seven. Therefore, the lowest common multiple is 420. And that's our final answer. Question 22. Xi equals one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A equals even numbers. B equals factors of 10. A. Complete the Venn diagram for this information. Xi basically means all the numbers that need to go into the Venn diagram. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all need to go inside this Venn diagram. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to list all the even numbers. So A, list all the even numbers from here. So we have 2, 4, 6, 8, and 10. And on this side, I'm going to list all the factors of 10. So 1, 10, 2, and 5. Now, when you complete a Venn diagram, you always need to start in the middle. So the middle is the common numbers between A and B. So the common numbers between A and B is 2, and a 2 over here. So I'm going to put a 2 here. And we've also got a 10, and a 10 so 10 goes over here. Now the next step is just to fill in the numbers for set A and B. So we have four on this side, six and eight, and on B set is one and five. 
and outside the circles are numbers that are not really involved. So it's three, seven, and nine. So I've just completed my Venn diagram. So let me just rub this off. A number is chosen at random from the universal set Xi. B, find the probability that this number is in the set A and B. Well, A and B are the intersection. So we have two numbers in the intersection, which are two and 10. So it's gonna be two over the total number of numbers, which is 10. And that's our final answer. Question 23. Carlo puts tins into small boxes and into large boxes. He puts six tins in each small box. He puts 20 tins in each large box. Carlo puts a total of 3,000 tins into the boxes so that number of tins in small boxes to the number of tins in large boxes equals two to three. Carlo says that less than 30% of the boxes filled with tins are large boxes. Is Carlo correct? You must show all your working. So the first thing we need to do is to work out the number of tins in small boxes to the number of tins in large boxes. We are given the ratio of two to three. Now to work out the number of tins in small boxes to the number of tins in large boxes, what we need to do, let me write down small boxes. is to work out what two fifths of 3000 is and large box three fifths of 3000 looks like a sixth So two fifths of 3000 is 1200 to three fifths of 3000 is 1800. So we've got tins and tins. Now I need to work out the number of boxes. So I'm going to divide the small tins by six and the large tins by 20. So what we're going to be doing now is 1,200 divided by six, which equals to 200, 200 boxes, and 1,800 divided by 20, which equals to 90 boxes. Now it says, Carlos says that less than 30% of the boxes filled with tins are large boxes. So what we need to do is, we need to find the percentage of large boxes divided by the total. So we're going to do 90 over 200 plus 90, which equals to 90 over 290. And so it's 90 over 290 multiplied by 100, which gives us a percentage, which is 31.5. 0, 3, 4, 4, 8, 2, 7, 5, 8, 6, 2 percent. Therefore, Carlo is wrong. It's not less than 30 percent. Large boxes take 31 percent. And that's your final answer. Question 24. A. Complete the table of values for y equals 5 minus x cubed. Now the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to let x equal to minus 2 and then substitute it back into the equation. So let x equal minus 2. Sub it back into this equation. So we have y is equal to 5 minus open brackets minus 2, close brackets, raise to the power of 3. And then we have y equals to 5 minus, minus 2 raised to the power of 3 is minus 8. y is equal to 5. 5 minus minus 8 is plus 8. y is therefore equal to 13. So our first value is 13. So I'm going to put 13 over here. Now I'm going to repeat the same process, but this time I'm going to let x equal to 0. So I'm going to let x 
equals zero, we have y equals five minus open brackets zero cubed. Now zero cubed is zero, so we have y is equal to five minus zero, therefore y is equal to five. So we have a second point. When x is zero, y is five. Now I'm going to repeat the process again, but this time let x equal to one. So let x equal one, y equals five minus open brackets one raised to the power three. We have y equals five minus one cubed is one. So therefore y is equal to four. And our final point is when x is equal to positive two. So let x equals two. We have y is equal to five minus open brackets two, close brackets raised to the power three. So we have y is equal to five minus two cubed is eight. Y is equal to five minus eight is minus three. And so our final point is minus three. When x is two, y is minus three. Question 24, B. On the grid below, draw the graph of y equals five minus x cubed for the values of x from minus two to two. So what we need to do now is to plot the points on the graph. So we have minus two and 13. So minus two is over here. Go all, all up here. So we have one, two, and 13 is here. Minus one and six, minus one and six is over here. Zero and five, one, two, one and four, two and minus three, so two and minus three. I'm now going to join the points together. Question 25, work out the value of X. Give your answer correct to one decimal place. To calculate the value of X, we're going to use trigonometry. First thing we're going to do is label the sides of the right angle to decide what trigonometry functions are we going to use. Now the side opposite the angle given to us is known as the opposite. And the side opposite the right angle is known as the hypotenuse. And the last side is known as the adjacent. Given that we want to work out the value of x and we've got the hypotenuse, I'm therefore going to be using the sine function. So sine theta is equal to the opposite divided by the hypotenuse. Now all I'm going to do is plug in the information given to us in this question in this equation. So we have sine 34 equals x over 178 millimeters. I'm then going to multiply both sides by 178 millimeters. So sine 34 multiplied by 188 millimeters gives us 99.5363682 millimeters. And I'm going to round it up to one decimal place. So it's 99.5 millimeters. That's our final answer. Let me just squeeze it in over here.
Question 26. A equals 3 to the right, 4 up. B equals 5 to the right and 2 down. Find 2A minus 3B as a column vector. So let me just write it out. So we have 2, 3, 4, minus 3, 5, minus 2. And I'm going to double it. So it's 6 and 8 minus 15 minus 6 equals 6 minus 15 is minus 9. Fourteen. So our answer is minus nine, fourteen. Question twenty-seven. The diagram shows a right angle triangle and a quarter circle. The right angle triangle ABC has angle ABC equals ninety degrees. The quarter circle has center C and a radius CB. Work out the area of the quarter circle. Give your answer correct to three significant figures. You must show all your working. So what this question is asking us to do is to find the area of the quarter circle. I've just highlighted it in red. So C, D, B, quarter of a circle, we need to find the area of this. To do that, we need to use the area of the circle formula, which is, let me write it out over here, area of circle is equal to pi r squared. We're then going to divide pi r squared by four as we only require a quarter of the area. However, we don't have the radius, but if you look at the question carefully, it clearly states that the quarter circle has a center C and a radius CB. So CB is my radius. To work out the radius of the quarter circle, what we need to do is use Pythagoras theorem. Now Pythagoras theorem only applies for right angle triangle. So A, B, C is a right angle triangle. Therefore we're, we can use Pythagoras theorem. Okay, so Pythagoras theorem has a certain formula and I'm sure most of you have heard it before. It's A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Now C always represents the hypotenuse. The hypotenuse can be identified as is opposite the right angle. So this is my right angle over here, over here. Op the opposite side to the right, right angle is the hypotenuse. So nine is C. Now, A and B are interchangeable. For, but in this example, I'm gonna use A as six and my radius as B. Now, all I'm gonna do is plug in the information given to us into this equation. So A is 6 squared, so 6 squared. B is R, so we have R squared, equals 9 squared. One second. 6 squared is 36, plus R squared equals 81. Now I'm going to subtract 36 from both sides. So we have r squared is equal to 45. Now, I want to isolate r by itself on the square root both sides. So r is equal to the square root of 45. The value of r is square root 45. Once we found the value of r, we can plug it into the area of the circle. So, as I mentioned early on, area of circle is equal to pi r squared and due to the reason that we need a quarter of the area of a circle I'm going to divide it by 4. Now I'm going to plug in the value r into this equation so we have pi open brackets square root 45 close brackets raised to the power of 2 over 4 The square root of 45 raised to the power of 2 is 45. So what we're left with is 45 pi over 
4. So the area of the quarter circle is equal to is equal to 35.3 Four two nine one seven three five, and we need to round it to three significant figures, so it's thirty five point three. Question twenty eight Each exterior angle of a regular polygon is fifteen degrees. Work out the number of sides of the polygon. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to write out the equation for the exterior angle. So it's exterior angle is equal to 360 degrees divided by number of sides. Now I'm just going to rearrange the equation to make number of sides the subject. So number of sides is equal to 360 degrees divided by exterior angle. Now what I'm going to do is just substitute in the information given to us. So I know the exterior angle is 15 degrees. So to work out the number of sides, we're going to do 360 divided by 15. So number of sides is equal to 360 degrees divided by 15 degrees which equals to, let me scroll down a little bit, 24. So the number of sides is 24. So your answer is 24. Question 29. Write down the gradient of the line with the equation y equals 2x plus 3. The gradient is always the number next to the x. So the gradient is equal to 2. 